Hello everybody and welcome to our October workshop. My name is Alex, I am here from Teach 2030 and the Commonwealth Education Trust. I am here with James Carver. James Carver has um, designed and is co-hosting this website, uh, this uh, workshop with me. He is a training coordinator from Unido. I am delighted to see so many faces here that I recognise from Unido too. So thank you all for joining us. Um, today we are looking at No Hands Up, what it is and how you use it in your classroom. This is a strategy that we cover on our Practical Active Learning course and we definitely think it's really useful for all of our classrooms. James is a TVET teacher, I am an English teacher, so we will all um, be able to share lots of different experiences as to how No Hands Up is used in our classroom. We're going to look at defining No Hands Up, outlining, outlining how to use No Hands Up in the classroom and then discussing the benefits. So what is it? Well, sometimes as teachers we ask questions to our classes and quite often we have our students put their hands straight up to answer it. For my English classroom I might say what is an adjective? Miss I know. Uh, no hands up is the premise that actually you don't want students to put their hand up to answer a question. Now that might seem a bit unnatural for us, but actually it can be really, really helpful uh, when you ask a question to ask your students not to put their hands up. Um, all of the class need to be ready, uh, as you might ask for any of their thoughts, and it keeps them prepared. So I'm going to go straight to James. James is going to have a um, discussion about, well, if we are asking questions to our class, how do we then get the answer back? So there are six strategies that we're going to look at. Uh, James is going to tell you all about the first one, how we can use names on sticks. Go for it, James. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Alex. Uh, we just want to uh, talk a little bit about how you implement the no hands up in your classroom. Like maybe you write no name, uh, write names on stick. So it's like you have a, a stick with you and then you write the names uh, of your, or your students on it. And then each time you pick up it, you look at it and you call in, call the name that is right before you. Uh, if it is uh, John, you say John, okay, please answer the questions. And then you look, the next name that will follow, you do, you do it at that. And then for uh, assigned or uh, pupil numbers, maybe you have about 10 students in your class. And then you go by giving each other the number. You say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So if you ask a question, you can ask, say, hey, number 10 or number five, can you answer the question? And if number five answer, then you can ask him if he can refer to another person. And then, you, yeah, and then you come so to it. Yeah, at least maybe it can come back to you. So the next one, you can use your register. If you've got your name, your, all your uh, students on a register, then what you can do is just hover your pen over the register and just put it down. So it's really straightforward. And whoever's name it lands on, maybe uh, it's Bobby. You say, OK, Bobby, you can answer that question now. The name generator. Well, actually, if you've got technology in the classroom, you can put a separate name on every single uh, slide of a PowerPoint. And you can set it up to go on a slide and, and convey about and then you just hit the stop button. What you might do is you have a, might have a hat. You can put all the students names, get all the slips of paper, put it inside the hat. Then you're asking a question, what's an adjective? And then you just pick out the name from the hat and whoever's uh, name it comes out has to answer the question. You can also get your students to do it. So you could you could say, oh, well done, Bobby, for answering that question. I'm going to ask another question. You can pick the next student to answer. So you could do that. And then James is going to tell us about the last one. Yeah, uh, like exchange. If you in the technical area, you like for all the students to participate in the classroom. So you do this, you, you give you give our questions and everyone answer on a piece of paper and you ask them to exchange the answer with their colleague. 
So exchange the answer with the colleague and then you pick one person to read that answer of their colleague. And once they read their answer and then the next person will take one person and read their answer, you do it like that and everybody can read each other answer. That is what you have there about or exchange of answers from Thanks, the questions. Guys. So like this, you get all the students in the class interacting and participating. Okay. So we look here, we look at the benefits of no hands up in the classroom. So there are several benefits. So if you look at one, you look at, understand what the class know now. Like this, you will know what each and every individual in the class, your students know. You will not let your, each of your students go into a text and then or leave in the classroom without, without you knowing what they know or what they understand. So that this, you also get rid of favoritizing from your classroom. Maybe you have your best students that you know you want the students always answering your question and you favor him in the classroom. That this you get rid of favor retasting. You will not be looking for favor. And you improve students' attention in the classroom. Maybe sometimes your students is like they always sleeping in the classroom, not participating. And you go look, you have to <laughs> you post. I know a that feeling really well, James, to be honest. Yeah. I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, and then also you allow them to be a deep thinker. Like this, everybody know that they're supposed to participate in the classroom. They're supposed to give an answer in the classroom. So they, they are thinking about what question you're going to ask and how they're going to answer it. So they're focusing on their lesson. And you also give the shout of verse. That means you, those who in the class always shout, don't like to participate in the class. Now you will see them start answering questions, start participate in the class activities. And then you, at last you get the class engaged, everybody engaged and participating, helping one another to provide, uh, make, it, make, make everything good for your, your class. So, so it's really useful, isn't it, James? It's, it's a yes, really very useful. Use Exactly. It's a really useful um, concept for um, ensuring that everybody feels engaged. And in terms of for you, James, and your classroom, oh, the slides disappeared. What can you give us an example from the TVET classroom then in terms of what use that that can have in the TVET classroom? We're just for some reason it's not flicking to that slide, James. Tell us a little bit about the TVET classroom. And how yeah. it's useful. If if you look at no no hands up in a TV classroom, you are looking at doing the practical area, and where you are introducing a key concept, and you want for all of the students to understand that concept or grab or be able to demonstrate that identical practical lesson that you are teaching them. So you introduce the no hands up. You ask each and every students to uh to read a manual or to, de to define what is electricity or to draw an electrical diagram. Now, each student have to draw that diagram according to the specification that you give. So as they go on the board, you ask, oh, John, yes, please go and write me, uh, uh, draw me an electrical diagram. Each of the students will go on the board, draw it, demonstrating what they do. So like that, you know exactly which students know what to draw and which students know they don't know how to draw an electrical mm -hmm. diagram. Mm -hmm. So this is exactly how you use the nose hands up in the TVET classroom. That's brilliant, James. That sounds incredibly useful and a great way of you gaining knowledge of, of what your students know. And so now I think it's a really good time to open up the discussion now that James has given a super example what about all those people who are participating um in our workshop can you see it working in your classroom um and where would you use it so if anybody wants to type anything then feel free or those people who are on facebook feel free to type those people on zoom feel free to type or if anybody wants to speak i think we could ask you to unmute if you want to say anything so do feel free to put your hands up and we'll go to you as to when you might use no hands up in your classroom 
I'll give it a second and see whether anybody wants to contribute. Feel free to type. Timothy? I think, yeah, Timothy hand is up. Okay, Timothy, I've asked you to unmute, so feel free to contribution. When will no hands up work for you? Okay. Good afternoon. Afternoon, Timothy. Okay. No hands up has a very good uh, advantage in the Tibet area, more especially in the hands-on uh, uh, learning. Number one, it helps you to may attend to, to attend to the special needs people. Do, I mean, I'm not talking about disabled, but those people that have less experience in the trade or in the hands-on uh, practices. Number one, if there's, there are some that already have informal practical experience, and they will not allow those that are incoming to, to learn or to get more understanding like they are. But if there is no hands uh, practices, then you will disallow them not to dominate the class. That is, and you will be able to help the, uh, the, the special needs student or those that even have less experience to go, to go along with them so that they can be at the same level. It has a very good... I think that's a really good point, Timothy. And I think that we can use, that's a whole separate topic of discussion, but using questioning for differentiation. Benefit. So the there area. will be different target grades within your classroom, absolutely. And you, when you're differentiating your questioning and aiming for those that are targeting a level seven, you can ask a certain question. And also for those that are targeting yes. a and, and it, you're right, it's a really good differentiation strategy. And so thanks for contributing that. That's brilliant. Um, Alice has said to us that she finds the no hands up technique really adaptable. And she's going to use this tomorrow during her session in class. Feel free, Alice, to tell us a bit more about that if you wish to. Um, I'll throw it open to anybody else. Anybody else wish to contribute? No, I see no other hands up, no other messages, which is not a problem at all. We don't, with this, these are very short, these workshops, so we don't want to keep you for much longer. We just want to give you different strategies. And James has given you a wonderful strategy for uh, no hands up. So just to consolidate a little bit, no hands up is a way to engage the students in the lesson. Try new strategies in your classroom. It's really important to say that sometimes strategies don't work first time and it's really hard to make strategies work first time. Um, part of having a growth mindset as a teacher is trying something, realising whether it's worked or not worked and giving it a go and working through it to make it perfect. So practice does make perfect. First time's always hard, so don't give yourself a hard time. Um, reflect on your teaching every day think about what went well, think about what to improve and what I can learn. And also just to say that you can uh, access all of our Teach 2030 courses are um, free for the part ones. You just need to visit www.teach2030.com. So if you access part one, that's absolutely free, but you can access part two for free using the co code JC Liberia. James Carver, Liberia. That's um, the code that you can use to access it for free. Uh, James has been an absolutely amazing co-host today and I want to thank him for all his hard work over the last month. It has been a pleasure working with him and all those at Unido. So thank you so much today, James. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed this session a lot. Thank you very much, Alex, for gave me the opportunity to be able to uh, do this live. 
Thank not you. at all, James. It's been an <laughs> absolute pleasure. And I've learned even more about the TVET classroom, which I don't, I've don't. i got to know quite well over our time working with UNIDO. But I've still got to say I know English a little bit more at the English classroom and teaching English language and English literature. But I'm learning even more about uh, TVET, which I'm really liking and enjoying. So thank you so much for your time. Next month, we I am co-hosting with Najilafek. And it is on the 30th of November at the same time. So we are super excited about that. Thank you, everybody, for joining. And we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Take care, everybody.